inspection, which has already taken place. Uh, when we get to the town meeting warrant itself, the first article is a standard motion that if you want to increase any line item, you've got to decrease it somewhere else or provide the source of funding. I don't think there's a lot of questions about that in the past. Um, what I would ask is if you do have questions, type them in the chat and we'll try and catch them as we go. Um, try to keep it so that we don't have people just speaking over everybody else. Um, Article two has to do with salaries for elected hey, officials. Hey, Um, again, if you have your microphone on, if you could uh, mute it, okay. it would be helpful so that we don't have to hear background conversation. Um, Mike, do you think we want to go through the budget tonight? Uh, I don't. I, I don't think we need to. I mean, we we've done it at the hearing; it's recorded. If anybody really wants to know about the budget, um, I mean, I could always hit the high points, but. Uh, Right. But it is on the FinCom. It's actually the the entire budget hearing is recorded, right? And and so we have the FinCom book is also posted with all of the numbers, including a a cover letter that kind of explains how we ended up where we are. So why don't we do this uh, before we go on beyond Article Three? Does anybody have? Has everybody looked at the budget? Are there any questions that anybody can think of right now that they'd like to ask us? And it's so like it's posted on the website. Um, I believe a couple of um, if you go to the town's website, the FinCom report is at the same place you found the link to this. Daniel, again, my son just posted the FinCom book, so you can click that link. That's for Jane, who asked where is it posted. Uh, it's a pretty much a standard budget. I don't think there's a whole lot of um, complicated things in there. Um, so why don't we continue on and we'll come back to the budget after people have a chance to look at it. How does that sound? Uh, Article 4 is the... Uh, appropriation for the school override that was voted in favor of at the election. So why don't we start with that? Um, are there anybody that has questions they'd like to ask about that tonight? Again, type it in the chat. Um, I guess if you need to unmute yourself to ask a question, go ahead and do that. Hey, Jay, John Thickner, Board of Health here. How are you doing? Tom? Good. How are you, Tom? Doing well, thank you. I did have a question on Article 4. Okay. Um, I had noticed that the wording on the article on the warrant is a little different than how it was presented on the ballot itself. So, all right, so let me address that because I think I can answer it. Typically, Article 4 would have been voted on prior to the election, and it would have been a vote contingent on passage of a ballot vote at the election. Uh, it does not say that, so it's not a contingent vote, but it has been approved at the ballot. So there's two steps to an override. The first part is giving the town permission to increase the levy by a certain amount, and that took place at the ballot and was voted. This is now to appropriate that increased taxing that is going to happen to appropriate to the schools. Uh, the way overrides work is you can only appropriate it to the schools in year one. So if the town raises the money, they have to give it to the schools, otherwise they can't raise it. Beyond that, then it's just part of the general levy for the town. So does that answer your question? Yes, yeah, so because it was voted uh, specifically at the ballot as an actual override, uh, the only way the money uh, would be approved would follow the similar path that it would be specific as an override as opposed to any appropriation from any other funding source, correct? Yeah, correct. So where this says appropriate borrowed transfer from available sources, that available sources is the authority given to the town by the passage of the ballot vote. But, okay, but great, great. And but but this has to pass as well in order for that to happen. Mike? Yes, yep, I know, I understand. Yep, I appreciate that. Thank you. The, the, only, the only point I would make is when I look at the language in Article 4, um, it doesn't specifically say through a two and a half override, but um, the, the one that will be voted on sh should have that two and a half language in there so that it actually can go over the two and a half uh, levy limit. Right, so well, so the catch on that, Mike, is you can't add that at the town meeting because it would be outside the scope of the warrant, which is what was sent out to people. So, but I don't think it matters in this case because no, it, it passed at the ballot. Right. Correct. Um, had we done it the other way around and it didn't have this, the town could have been on the hook without the ability to raise the taxes. But the way it's working here, because we had the election first, this should suffice to cover us. Is there any other questions on Article 4? There's a couple in the chat, Jay, about the school budget. 
Um, all right, sorry, I should be looking at the chat too. Has the school budget been changed due to COVID-19 shutdown? Um, uh, Sean, do you want to answer that? You want me to answer that? He's pointing at me. Okay, um, yes, the school district originally came through with a budget uh, back in March prior to the entire school closure that had a fairly substantial override in early May, the school committee recertified the budget and reduced it dramatically to what we're, what the school district is looking for is to hopefully have level services. As many of you know, the school has since then laid off about 27 employees because we're being told from the state that state aid could potentially be reduced from anywhere from 10 to 20 percent, and that would be anywhere from 1.4 to 2.8 million dollars. So this override is just a very small piece of what the school district is hoping to get back during the course of the budget cycle at the state level. We may not have that information until August or even later, depending on how soon the state actually does a budget. Um, but the, the, it was reduced dramatically. Now the school district does have a multitude of expenses they're gonna have to invest in as far as PPE equipment, um, procedures as far as students returning. The state just released today the guidance and they want us to come up with three different uh, scenarios and how to have kids come back into school. That's all being worked on, but it's not, uh, it's not definite yet. I would like to know, Susan Edmondson, I'd like to know why I should vote for an override when school expenses has, have, significant, have significantly changed in the last few months. Um, I don't can maybe Sue, she, can you maybe she means yeah maybe she means when school expenses have not significantly changed right. Sue can you unmute and and clarify what you're asking I I'm not hearing you you're still muted there you go no Sue uh, yeah we're not hearing you yet so you got to unmute your oh, mic there you that's go I put my camera on instead sorry <laughs> <laughs> um um so you, you, I've been following all of this. Um, I actually just, you know, so I don't, I, I was on the school committee in Milford for a number of years uh, and, and I know how the budget works um, well. Um, but as I was looking at the override, I was very much, you, you know, pre-March, I was um, for it, but with all of the changes that are taking place in education and the educational needs, and actually I just added something else I hit, haven't hit enter yet. Um, Jay, you so kindly just mentioned that we're going to have new expenses because of COVID, things like that. I have trouble voting for a budget that isn't our budget. Um, we're going to have layoffs, we're going to have different expenses, we're going to have um, things that aren't going to cost money for the school system. We're going to have new expenses with COVID. Um, I'm going to have trouble voting for this on Monday night. I would like the opportunity to be told that there's going to be a new budget that we can vote on, as you just mentioned, possibly in August, where things are more defined. Tail. Um, I, 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 I just, I'm, I need more definition before I can vote. All right, so let me try and address some of that. Um, we have to have our budget by June 30th, or we basically have to shut down everything on July 1. Now, I did file, right. a one, I did file a 112 budget with the state, so that would give us level funding for next year from the town. It's the state budget that's not solidified, but the bottom line is that the budget that was certified that's probably our best case scenario. Anything that gets that changes on the state level will be less revenue, not more, and we will have more expenses, not less. So quite honestly, this is not going to cover the expenses that we're going to have to absorb, and we're hoping that there'll be some federal and state stimulus money that will backfill some of these things. We won't have answers for those for potentially several months. Um, and, and, and I understand, I totally understand that the school budget begins, what, July 1st, and, and, right. and we need to, we need to um, get something, but can we level fund until we know what our next round of expenses are? I mean, I just, I feel very ill-equipped as a voter. Well, I guess what I would tell you is it can't go up from what was certified now, so this is the best case. I see. Um, it, and you know, Jay, can I just mention yes. as the chairman of the FinCom, this is this money is only the Menden contribution 
to the Menden up the regional school district. There's the Upton piece and there's the state piece. Um, we need this uh, override and the FinCon did vote to support this. Um, we never, we never really took a vote on the original request, but we voted to support this because as Jay said, this is the best case scenario. There are already several expenses is not going to go up and any other expenses are going to have to be backfilled from other places because the town has no more. The only reason we're recommending the, the override is because we've given them what we have without the override and we're, we can't provide any more than this. And as I said, if it does come, it's going to come from other sources. But yeah. am I correct that um, if we vote on this, the expenses that we're voting on cannot be used for other things? So if we're voting on teacher salaries that can't be used for COVID expenses, just for a, 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 a pretty simple well, example of what I'm asking? When the town, because we're a regional school district, when the town votes money for the school district, you're voting a sum of money and then it's the school committee's authority to determine how that money is spent, not the town's. Um, so this override adds about 271,000. Right. The matching amount from Upton gets it up in the five, uh, 550, 600,000 range. Um, that just means it, that's revenue toward the school district. now. What expenses it's going to go to? The goal initially is going to be to bring back staff because we've laid off so many. But right. on top of that, there is a good possibility that we're going to have other expenses related to COVID-19. Um, you know, as far as PBE and stuff, and we're already in the process of purchasing purchasing many of that stuff because you have to order now to have it for the fall. Um, but what I again, what I would tell you is that the expenses that we're going to face coming into the fall are going to far exceed more than likely the revenue, and we're going to have to adjust accordingly. And how we do that has not been determined yet. It won't be able to be determined until we know what the state budget is. If we had a state budget, I could answer these questions and give you definitives. But right now, we don't have it. You know, the House and Senate haven't done anything. All we have is the governor's budget, and they've already told us to throw that away. But Jay, <laughs> there's there's specific line items that we can talk to that go to uh, go go to the expenses that we have to pay, um, uh, assuming that there would be no change in the in the uh, state funding right Do you want me to cover uh, those yeah go ahead i'm going to try and pull up the spreadsheet and um just so i can get more specific numbers but go ahead sean sean is right, uh, so for the school committee everybody in case you don't know sean now and, and Hi, I'll, I'll unmute i i just um want to thank you for um listening to my questions i appreciate i've been uh, I lived in Milford for many years, and I'm now a, a, a resident of Menden very happily. And um, I enjoy um, following town meeting um, issues. So thank you very much for your time. Let, let well, me just address one thing, the and then I'm going to, Sean, before you go on, let me just sure. address one thing. So if this override goes through, and if we have level funding from the state, and that's a big if, the school district's budget then is going to be at an increase of 1.97%. It's about $718,000, which barely covers fixed costs, let alone anything else. Um, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, so the, so the, uh, the line items, thank you for the question, by the way. That was very well put. And um, uh, if, we, if we count up all of the um, override money, which is $612,620, um, all of that is being put toward instructional supplies, of fifty-three thousand uh, dollars, the Worcester Retirement Fund uh, for the teachers and and staff retirement of seventy-seven thousand dollars, health insurance payments of three hundred seventy-four thousand uh, dollars, fixed costs of thirty-six thousand dollars, property and casualty insurance that has gone up uh, twenty-two thousand dollars, and special ed transportation of sixty-five thousand dollars. So, um, and that that exceeds all those line items exceed the uh, the amount of the override. So we've got specific earmarks for this money uh, that are requirements that the school has to pay. I'm looking for other questions now. Uh, do you expect to need a special town meeting and ballot vote to allocate additional school money? That's a question I can't really answer until we know where we end up. I'd like to say no, that we're gonna make this work, but I can't um, until we, you know, if the state cuts $2.8 million out of our budget, we probably are gonna be looking to the towns to help us, but that doesn't mean that the, town, the towns would have a choice at that point. Um, 
adding COVID expenses would create a new budget, not necessarily a new budget, would just add expenses to the existing budget. <laughs> um, all right, are there additional questions on this? We can come back to it. I'll, we'll continue to move on. Um, how many people are on, by the way, now? Does anybody know? Does anybody look at the participants? Um, 37, right. Jay. 47? 37. 37, okay. Um, Article 5, and I, I believe 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, no, up to nine are going to be um, consent calendars. Is that right, Ellen? Uh, Not sure if 10 fits into the consent calendar. What that means, consent calendar, so. these are I motions think that's nine. up to nine, right? Those are motions we do every single year. They never change. We do them as a lump sum, you know, a lump vote uh, just to speed up the process. Um, there has never been any discussion on any of them that I can remember in the 11 or 12 years I've been moderator. Um, so that would be the process, but are there any questions on any of those? Otherwise we'll jump on to 10. Um, I don't see any, all right. Article 10 has to do with uh, funding the affordable housing coordinator. Again, it's something we do every year, but I think because there's a dollar value, we have to vote it separately. It comes from the CPC. It's not from the operational budget. Article 11 is to help fund uh, the police station debt from the CPC funds. So that will be, I believe the bond has been done. That's going to be to fund that piece of that. Um, let me go back. I see another question here. If the vote on the school override fails, the increase we voted at the ballot goes where? Um, there's two options there. It either doesn't get levied or you could do a vote. Could The town could do an underride. But I would guess that if it doesn't get passed, since up didn't pass their share last night, the school committee is going to come back to the town and request it a second time since it passed at the ballot. I don't think it's just going to go away. Uh, that was for Megan. Um, all right, Article 12 is CPC money for. Um, Do you want me to jump station? in here for Second, yeah, 11 and 12 yeah. would be the same thing. Can you clarify those, Kim? Sure. We, When we did the initial bond issue for the police station a couple years ago, um, it was for $5 million. The final cost for the police station that was approved by the town to borrow was 6.4. So we had to do a second issue that was $1.4 million, which we just did last week. Um, CPC's share of the new portion of that payment is a third of it. So that's that additional $30,000 that's being added at the top at 11. And 12 is actually the vote to move the money for the entire payment. So in, okay. in, in, up in coming years, you'll only see 12 again. It's just this one time vote on 11 to add the extra money for this extra bond. Okay. And CPC money again is outside. I mean, it's in the operational budget, but it's a levy outside of it. Um, right. Funds that were available. Um, all right, uh, 13 is CPC money for Fino debt exclusion. So again, that's a pretty standard one. I think the amount probably changes as the debt decreases, but that's to pay off the Fino land. Um, does anybody know how many years we got left on that Fino debt? Kimberly? Um, I think, I it's, think three years. it's three Three? Okay, just because I know people always want to know when we're going to stop paying for it. Uh, 14 is... Uh, sum of money to operate the water enterprise fund um, so maybe we can get a brief explanation on that daniel i feel like bueller, well, bueller. if i can <laughs> if, if you want me to, to to regurgitate what was explained to us at the fincom and we went through this a few times last year got it now sorry oh, all right, you want to go ahead and explain this, Jay, um, Dan, yeah. little Jay? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I basically, the water department now operates in what's called an enterprise fund, which essentially means it's self-contained. This is a vote on just the budget for the water department, and this is just the part of the public customers. Um, so it's 100% funded by the rates they pay for water, and then we have to turn around and buy that water from Hopedale and pay all the testing and all that. No, all right, so, 
Does that mean this is moving money from operational into the enterprise fund to fund that portion of it so that everything comes out of the fund? No. No. It's raising money from our planned receipts for the fiscal year 21 and using them to pay our bills. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know. Is there any other questions? You can type them in. We'll try and catch them as we go. Um, Article 15 is to set the limits for revolving funds, and you can see the limits there. I believe the only change here is there's an increase in the limit for the Parks Department, and that's because they're bringing in and have expenses that are exceeding what the limit was, so this is to keep them in compliance. I think I've explained that correctly. Um, 16 and 17 are zoning bylaws, and I'm going to let you kind of explain those because I think you're more in tune with them than any of us. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So the um let's see, the, the changes to the zoning bylaws are to incorporate low impact development techniques into the bylaws. And um the town received two grants to um figure out what to add to the bylaws and to integrate them into the zoning bylaws. And basically what it is is to um handle the stormwater runoff and roof runoff so that the water is absorbed into the ground versus just running off pavements. So it has to do with um, having like less asphalt, more greenery. Um, you know, it keeps places cooler and hot days. And, and a very important aspect of it is it protects waterways and aquifers and, and keeps the water clean because it's filtrated through the soil. And that's really important in Menden. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. And this has been approved by the Planning Board, the Conservation Commission, the Highway Surveyor, Land Use Committee. So it's really been through all the boards. And we've had public hearings and so we're having another one. So Okay. And that 16 and 17 both apply to the same thing, correct? Well, actually, 17 is just a housekeeping item where that bylaw has expired. And so it's just to take it off the books. That's all. Okay. All right. Um, what I'm going to do just... I have a question on 17. Sure. Who is this? David Atkinson. Oh, hi, David. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, I want to know why we're going to, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, get rid of the rate of development uh, part of the zoning, of the planning zoning law. Okay. And go ahead. Are we going to be I building 100 houses here instead of 39 or what? Yeah, we'll get you an answer. Hang on. Go ahead, Ann. So this bylaw was put in like 15 or 20 years ago, and the idea of it was to just slow down the development so the town could plan for the influx of new development. And there was an expiration date on it. You could only have it for like five years, and it expired like 10 years ago. And so it's not in effect now. It's just, you know, it's... it's um, in the zoning bylaws, but it, it's, you can't do anything with it. So I don't know if you could reintroduce another one, but I do know that the last time we had the rate of development bylaw on there, um, it reduced the number of buildings, but we never reached the threshold. So it didn't really stop any development. We never reached the threshold. Right. Well, I, you have I to went have to like, all. you have so to have a reason. Go ahead, I, went, I visited all 2,000 houses in town, and we sure do have a lot more than, than I would expect. Well, I think what Ann is telling you is that the rate of development is probably an annual number that's allowed, and we never had more than that in any given year. Huh. Right. So, you have to have like a logic to the number you picked. So we looked at how many houses were, or they looked at how many houses were built in the last like 10 years, and they used that number so that if so there wouldn't be like a surge of new building and then many could plan for future growth right so it doesn't preclude the idea that maybe in the future the planning board wants to have another rate of development that either limits or does something to control development as things go on but what i think the gist here is that this one is no longer is expired years ago and it's just to get it off the books because it's just housekeeping all right does that make sense right, thank you um what I want to do before we go through the rest of these is just sort of explain how we're going to handle town meeting on uh, Monday night. As I'm sure all of you know, we're going to do it outside on the football field, which will be, I think, a first for us. I'm going to ask that everybody park down in the front of the school and walk up to the back. If you need handicapped accessibility, if you have to be able to be driven up there, 
You're going to be able to drive around the north side of the school and around the back, and we'll have some spaces available to park out on the softball field, baseball field. Anybody needs help, we'll be there, but it's not for everybody to just drive up there. We want people to park in front and walk up back. We are asking you to bring your own chair, um, bring an umbrella, bring some bug spray, bring some something to drink. I will uh, get rid of that rule that Roland used to have in that you can't wear a hat inside because we're going to be outside if anybody wants that. We're going to try and get this done. It looks like the weather's going to cooperate. Uh, we will have a rack of a few chairs out there, but we really need people to bring their own. We're going to set up on the field. We're going to have a sound system, and we're going to try and move through this as fast as we can and get the business of the town done, get the budget approved. It's important to approve the budget before July 1. Um, we are gonna have one microphone for people to speak to, and I'm gonna ask that if you wanna speak, you gotta come up to the mic. We're not gonna stay out in the crowd and yell to people. But the purpose of this was to try and answer questions so we don't have to answer these questions Monday night. And we're gonna encourage people Monday night not to get up and just say, hey, I think this is ridiculous. Hey, I'm in favor of this but rather get up to ask clarifying questions so that we're sure that we know what we're voting on. We're gonna try and move through things as quickly as we can and get things done. Um, it's not an ideal situation, but based on what we've gone through over the last three months, we felt this was the safest way to get the business done and get the meeting going. Um, I had encouraged the Board of Selectmen to get a liquor license. I thought that would make it more entertaining, but I was told no, so we won't be doing that. Um, <laughs> Roland, you're shaking your head. I can see it. <laughs> um, so if there's questions on that, please let me know. Um, but I, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do this well. I think we need to do and have it happen and get it done. Um, all right, article, we, we did uh, 17. So article 18 is CPC. It's money to uh, cover costs for landscape and drainage at the beach facility. Um, does somebody want to? have questions on that. Otherwise, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't, um, feel free to speak up if you want to um, or type something in the chat. Jay, you have a, um, Kathy's got her hand raised. Oh, I can't even see that. Hi. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Jay, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Um, I, I don't mean to dial back. I thought um, I raised my hand earlier, but, um, on Article 17, um, is it 17? That's the expired yeah. rate of development bylaw. Yeah, and and I guess my question is, um, are we putting the cart before the horse? Because we don't have a master plan or anything to kind of work off of. So kind of opening the floodgates to development, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if that's ever been discussed or... Um, well, my understanding, if I understood what I was being told, is that this bylaw expired many years ago, not just now. So we yeah. haven't had this in effect for a while. Uh, whether, Like I said, whether we should have a rated development bylaw, that's something that the planning board would take up. Um, they haven't done that, but that's not something that we would address at a town meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I was just curious to yeah. know if you weren't working backwards. Okay. Yeah. Right. Apparently you can't have both the chat and the participants up on the window at the same time. Is that right? Possibly. Does I well I'm, I don't know. But anyway, all right. Does that does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Um, like I said, 18 is uh for engineering costs for some drainage improvements at the beach. Um 19. Okay. Yes. Just a, just a question on number 17. It might be very helpful if you just point out the date that that expired. So you don't wind up spending a lot of uh, time talking about something that we can't do anything about. And if you don't agree with this and you just pass it over, it's still not there and it hasn't been in effect. So right. you might be able to short circuit some of that. Okay, so Anne, I think, I don't know who will be making this motion. If it's you, I would ask you when, when I go to you for discussion to say, you know, the bylaw, this particular clause expired in, you know, 1974 or whatever it was, just so people understand that it's been off the books for a period of time. Okay, I see you nodding your head, so that's a good sign. Um, all right, 19 is CPC money to put gutters on the records room. Um, I think Kim, you had a nice visit out there the other day, probably to look at the lack of gutters. Um, but again, it seems pretty self-explanatory. Um, the amounts aren't here, but I'm sure they will be in the motions. I probably should have just pulled those up instead of the warrant. 
Um, Article 20 is for money from the only Cook House National Register. Um, all right, so maybe, uh, Kim, you can explain that or uh, Ann or somebody. Well, this 20 and 21 is actually just transferring money back into the CPC account. Monies have been transferred previously to do work. Um, and this is this is left over. So 20 and 21 are actually just to put money back okay. into the account. So and money was put over to do work. The work is done. The money wasn't used. So we're putting it back where it came from. Right. And actually, Article 19, it was $1,200. 1200 OK. For the gutters. Right. Um, Article 22, CPC. Um, and I'll let you explain this. A native pollinator meadow. Um, I think Kathy is going to explain Kathy, that. Explain it. Hi. OK, so here's my spiel. You ready? Um, the CPC is requesting the transfer of 20000 from the Community Preservation Budget Reserve account and the Community Preservation Open Space account to fund the installation of a native pollinator meadow on 20 Milford Street in the Muddy Brook, Brook Conservation Area. Um, the project doesn't impact the development potential of the parcels on either side of the open space, but it does have the potential to improve the value of this area. Um, the federal government and the state have uh, taken action to adopt pollinator uh, protection plans. Uh, we are looking at this parcel, which would go unused and overgrown with invasives, and hoping to restore native plant materials to um, the uh, pollinators in our area. Um, they're an essential link in our own food supply. The funds that are requested will pay for the removal of the invasive plant species along the Muddy Brook Conservation Area. Native trees and plants will replace those invasives and provide a food source for our local pollinators. Um, we'll be adding trails and boardwalks and viewing areas so that the public can actually access this area. Um, the project should probably take about five years to complete. It's a great opportunity to partner with schools, organizations, and businesses in our community to work together to restore habitats and native food sources for our pollinators. But we, we lose a lot when through development and the use of pesticides. And I believe that everybody is aware that it's a growing concern that the bee populations are declining significantly. So um, it, we would like to adopt a project to move um, forward and help um, alleviate some of the problems that we're having. Okay. Um, uh, now, I believe uh, my son has posted a link to a PowerPoint that sort of goes through a lot of the details on this. Um, so if anybody wants to learn more, that's a good way. I, one thing I didn't point out that I'll point out now, we will not have a screen out on the field. We will not have any electronic presentations. It's going to be old school paper. Um, so everything we're basically you're going to have to do it verbally and speak. And I am going to ask, you know, that people try to control their speaking to uh, what I always tell people is if you come with like six pages that you've written out, so you make sure you cover everything, see if you can get it to about a half a page, because after about page one and a half, you've lost everybody. <laughs> OK, so just, where, where in my presentation did I lose you? <laughs> Jay, uh, just tell me I now. Mean, when you said, here's my spiel, but I didn't <laughs> want to go there. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no. Jay, that, just like said, it's fine. I just, like I said, what I want to make sure we do is, again, we're trying to get through a meeting. You know, it's going to get dark by about 8 30. Yeah. So we want to get facts out and ask clarifying questions, but we want to make sure that we keep it as concise as possible. Yeah. Jay, yeah. I. I plan to email out to all the Menden email addresses, and maybe you can send to the school ones too, the same links that Dan was posting tonight with the FinCom book that has the warrant in it, and then maybe also the presentation. So people can, you know, everyone will have their phone on them. So if they want to pull it up when we're at the meeting on their own device, right. they can do it right there. Okay. That's a great idea. Thank I you. will say uh, cell service out back there is not great, but uh, <laughs> it's as good Download as Download it early. Um, Download it. Yeah, but that will all help if we can put it on the website, if we can push it out in as many ways as we can. Hopefully people will have information ahead of coming in there. All right. Um, Article 23 is, um, and you want to address this, it looks like the public water supply for the project over next to the highway barn and the senior center. 
I think Bill McHenry is on, and I think he will describe it, but if he's not here, I will. I think I saw Bill's name in there somewhere. Yeah, good evening, everybody. You can hear me? Yep, you're on. Right, thanks. So at the last town meeting, um, the articles were voted down to help us finish a grant that I have to do the initial phase of uh, DEP permitting for a public water supply. And so we needed to find another route to uh, complete the grant work. And we're going to have to repeat a few steps. So we're going to go slightly over our grant budget. Um, and we're basically looking for a little bit of buffer money. We don't intend to spend all of this money at all. Um, I can answer any questions about the specifics of this, but that's the intent of the article. OK. And you'll be, ex be able to explain that when the motion is made quickly and concisely, correct? I can. Well, Ann will do it on my on my uh, behalf. Uh, I'm behalf. actually I'm actually speaking to you from North Carolina right now. Oh, good to know. All right. I don't see questions on any of that so far. Um, Article 24 has to do with the pumper truck. Mike, you want to address this? Sure. To to make a long story short, we had originally put this on the warrant, um, looking to purchase a new fire truck. Uh, over a multi-year lease. Uh, we had tabled it because there was a, uh, a decision to wait for a grant uh, that's going to be awarded or discussed later this, uh, later this summer or early fall. Uh, in the meantime, uh, an inspection of the truck done by uh, an outside expert revealed that there's significant uh, corrosion in the frame and it needs to be replace as soon as possible. So what the fire chief figured out is that or uh, determined is that there is a, a need for about uh, a, an eight year lease at $75,000 a year. That's worst case if we don't get a FEMA grant. Uh, we reached out to our Congressman uh, Jim McGovern, who's written a letter of support to FEMA. Um, and there's a you know, there's a there's a, a fairly good chance that we'll get a uh, we'll get a grant to pay for most of it. Um, but worst case is uh, it's going to be seventy five thousand a year for the next eight years. Uh, we can pay for that out of our, our capital uh, expense slash stabilization account with a third two thirds vote. Um, so at our uh, as this is all developed in this last week, um, tomorrow night, the FinCom will be discussing it. Um, I, I expect the FinCom to, to uh, rec make a favorable recommendation. Uh, and then this $75,000, uh, we would be looking for a transfer out of capital ex our CapEx account to pay for the first year of the lease. Um, we've got about $150,000 um, in CapEx. Um, we put money in it each year. Um, so it's, it's something that, uh, you know, that's what the money is in there for. So that's a thumbnail sketch of it. Okay. And, and the, the fire chief will be on hand on, uh, Monday night to discuss, uh, any other details, but really we, we, we have to have a frontline fire truck and it's past its useful life and, uh, we need to replace it. And this is the mechanism we're going to use to replace it. And I'll add to that that the Capital Planning Committee discussed this long before any of these things came up, and this was at the top of the list of capital expenditures, and they had a letter of recommendation sent to the board and the Finance Committee probably in February prior to everything closing. Right. That we had had a priority. Thing, but then we decided to table it just right. because, oh, I get because we figured we could wait for the grant and then it wouldn't cost us anything. And it still might not cost us anything, but, you know, we can't depend on that, so we have to act while we have the opportunity all right so that's article 24 um i see from carl uh, if we allocate 75 this year are we committing future town meetings are we committing future town meetings for the next 10 years to do the same um i would say the answer to that mike you want, want to address it but yes if we have a, in an eight year lease, you have to appropriate the money every year it would be it would be for another seven years but again we don't have any other choice right you know, we have to have a fire truck um you know, we have we haven't replaced it for many years. Short answer is not ten years, but it would be an additional seven years over this year. And I can just add in here too. 
we going forward in the future years, we have different options for funding it. It could be from CapEx. It could be from stabilization. We could do um, a debt exclusion if we had to sort of reverse debt exclusion. Um, there's different ways that we could pay for it rather than taking it out of operating, but that is also an option. And I should add to this because I just looked it up. The truck that we're looking to replace is 27 years old. So I think we've probably gotten our money's worth out of it. It's a 1993. Um, I mean, that's one of the challenges we have as a town is a lot of our stuff are um, in quite a in quite disarray. Um, Ellen is telling me before we go on that we have some hands raised. And I don't. Chief Kessler. I don't, I don't see the hands, but why don't we go ahead? If you have your hand raised, um, maybe yes, you see that, Ellen, but I don't. Yes, this is Chief Kessler. I was just going to uh, mention that the truck replacing is 27 year old, years old. The other engine that we have is 17 years old. So it's been quite a while since uh, the town has invested in an engine. Yeah. Okay. Um, Article 25 has to do with the town hall well. Um, I'll give you the brief what I know about it. There's a well for town hall. The well is actually inside the elevator mechanical room. Uh, the pump is failing. It's going to supply water to the police station as well as town hall, and it needs to be replaced. The problem is getting to it with a building around it and the way it was installed. It's not a flexible hose like you have in your house. It's metal piping. It's difficult to come out. So this is a, a motion to appropriate money again from the capital X account to uh, cover those costs. And then they're going to try and see if they can get it done for less, I think is the plan. Daniel, you want to add anything to that? I think that about sums it up. It's that this, so it's the well for the entire town hall campus, the old library building, the town hall and the police station. Somebody's phone is ringing. Um, all right, so and that's what that's for. And again, those funds would come out of the uh, CapEx account. Uh, the Capital Planning Committee also met on that and voted to support that as well. Um, and I believe that covers everything on the warrant. So I guess what I would ask before we go any further is, is there anything here that anybody, I mean, we don't have a lot of people here. I'm hoping we're going to have a better turnout. You know, we've got uh, 34 people. We were up to about 40, but, you know, hopefully we're going to have more than this at the town meeting. But the purpose of this was to try to answer questions ahead of time. Did we not cover something? Does anybody have a question that we missed? Are there hands up that I can't see? I think you're the only one that can see the hands, Alan. We're done. I just uh, want to this is Simmons, and I just want to thank you for um, addressing the questions that I had, and I will be there Monday night. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks. Um, there's another question. What is the quorum number for the football field? Well, so as a town meeting, Realistically, all that needs to be there to vote the budget and everything else is Ellen and myself because we have to be yeah. there, but there is no quorum. As far as the football field, I'd say we probably can handle 600 people out on that field if we use the entire field. We're going to set up the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, myself and Ellen near the concession stand, if anybody's familiar with the field on the track. We're going to tell people to set up six feet apart, um, starting like on the grass area. I don't really think we're going to go much further than the first goalpost, but if we have to, we'll go beyond that. I would prefer people don't bring pop up tents, but I guess if the weather's crummy, we're going to have to do that. The only thing that we're going to do different, I think, than we typically do if is if there has to be a hand count. Somebody thinks that I can't count or can't hear properly when the when the roll call is done and I say, yes, everybody's in favor. We're not going to do raise your hands. We're going to have people stand up because I think it'll be easier to count with people standing up. Um, beyond that, um, let's see, Tom, hey, Jay, can you address expectations regard to COVID-19? So we put together a sheet that's on the website about what we're expecting. The bottom line is we're going to ask you to wear face masks. Um, the rules basically on face masks, masks are if you can't stay six feet or more apart, you should wear one. We're going to try and help hope that people will respect the six foot radius, but face masks would be a good idea. Um, beyond that, I don't know that we're going to have, you know, there's not a lot. We're not going to have hand sanitizers out there. We're not going to be exchanging things where people have to do it. All of the motions have already been printed, so I'll have them all so I don't have to get them from Mike. Um, so that's really about it. Is there, Tom, just because you're on here, is there something we're missing that we should have addressed? I took all the regulations and put them together on um, 
on the uh, what do you call it on the 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 guidance thing that I put together that's on the website. I took stuff right off the state. Um, as far um, somebody else asked um, article about going from three to five. I think Mike said the article was removed. It'll come back in the fall. Sue says thank you. Um, Mike says Carolyn says thanks to Mike. Um, are there other questions? Have we missed anything? I mean. Quite honestly, that hopefully this will answer some questions that we don't have to ask and answer at the town meeting, but I'm sure there'll be others. Hey, Jay, it's that Tom. Yep. Thought I'd go verbal. Uh, no, I think uh, what you're putting forth from a, you know, attendees' um, expectation from the COVID situation is fine. You know, social distancing is a key element, and where that couldn't be, a, you know, kept, and of course, having a face covering of some kind, everyone should should have one available. Right. Um, and I think other than that, you know, common sense here prevails and it sounds like, uh, you know, the setup's going to accommodate it. We're outdoors. So, good shape. Thank yeah. you. And yeah, my hope is that common sense will prevail. That was, I learned this from Roland when he was monitor, monitor, you know, we have lots of rules and things that we try to follow, but ultimately in the end, we try to use common sense, but uh, that doesn't always work either. Um, We'll do the best we can, though, with what we've got. As far as, like I just said, standing up in order to vote, if somebody is not unable to stand, you know, we'll have to figure out a way to count them so that we make sure that everybody's counted. Um, I don't want to have any issues. The track is ADA compliant, so we should have any issues with getting anybody up there. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think this is the only way we can do this. I was concerned about doing it in the gym and having too many people in there. Anything else? As my uh, boss always says, anything else for the good of the order? I see Roland leaning forward. That means he's going to mute himself or he just wants to see closer. There well, you go. I just want to say uh, it, it, uh, thanks uh, Thanks for being my first and, and initial uh, virtual meeting. So and it went with, without a hitch. So if your meeting goes as well as, the, as this went, life will be good. Yeah, I hope so. Um, just to answer one other question, because people have asked, why couldn't we do the town meeting this way? If we were a representative town government, we could have done it via Zoom, but open town meeting requires you actually to be there. And quite honestly, for those that don't have the computer technology to do a session like this, you don't want to exclude their right to vote at a town meeting. So this is why we're meeting. Um, other than that, I think we've covered everything we need to cover, correct? I'll, we'll just stay on for a couple more minutes because we okay. said we'd go till seven. So if people want to leave, thank you okay. for coming. If someone wants to linger and ask other questions while we're here, you've got a captive audience, right? Yeah. We'll we'll stick around for another eight minutes. That's fine. We'll see if see anybody's got some right lingering thing they want to know, right? <laughs> we'll find out. Um, what is the what is the weather forecast? Have we checked? Uh, the last time I looked, let me look right now again, but the last time I looked, it was like maybe a 30% chance of rain during the day, but okay at night. Yeah, I think I saw 5% at 7. So I'm now seeing Monday, 30% chance, 80 degrees, 65 at night. Um, I don't think my hourly goes that far, but... I just took, I took a look at the longer term model and it doesn't show any rain around Monday evening. Yeah. Great. Uh, Honestly, we should be asking you. That's true. A misty light rain, nothing serious. We're going to do this anyway. That's why I say bring an umbrella. Um, obviously, if we have torrential downpours or hurricanes or tornadoes or thunderstorms, we will all stand on the fence, hold it, and point our hand in the air in defiance of any lightning that could come forward. <laughs> um, I shouldn't say stuff like this. I, I don't know how many people are still left here, but people may not. The moderator wants everyone to go out there and get you. Know, I used to tell the kids that when I coached. They, they did say it's recorded, so it's it's being preserved for posterity. So yeah, I know. Well, you know, I have to say good night. Stay safe, folks. We'll see you Monday. Rowan, thanks. Right, good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good one. You too. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. I think to do this outside, but I, you know, I think it'll work. I mean, I was even thinking, like, you know. Every, don't we all have like 10 foot patio umbrellas too? Like even for the front, like, but then if, where's the sun going to be in relation to the umbrella at that time of day? Right. So I don't even think it would help even with that. Uh, so. I thought I'd work on my tan anyway. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't gotten a good burn yet, so I might as well get out there now.
<laughs> you try to get your tan to match your black eye, so no that one will notice. Uh, yeah, nobody actually can see that because of the glasses. They don't know what happened here, but <laughs> they can't see because it's blurry. You know, the screen is a little bit blurry, so they don't know. So you know, they want to see here. How's that look? <laughs> what, what, what happened? <laughs> I tripped. I was walking my dogs, and he, they were excited about something, and in the process of walking away, one kind of went between my legs and just tripped me up, and I went face planted right on Edward Road. <laughs> broke my glasses so i got old glasses now and it's actually much better today than it was monday and tuesday but uh, it's probably the first black eye i've gotten since i was like 12. yeah i've i've what been there done that start to happen no, like that i got dragged down the street once by my dog too these things and i think we're talking about a like a 20 pound <laughs> dog right this was a long this was a ridgeback back oh, okay, it was a okay. ridge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had two 65 pound dogs, one on each arm. Um, no, this dog, you know, it will trip you. That's for sure. It's under your feet. Yeah, you know, but, when I, it's funny when I walk, it's like uh, you want them on each side of you, but they always come to the middle. So they're together and they get right yeah. in front of me. And it's just um, it's just the way it is. But it's, I still need the exercise. So it's what happens. Mm -hmm. Just gives me uh, gives me that bad boy look, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're not re still recording are we yes yeah, uh, we're recording oh good thanks you know but seven yeah. who's ever who's ever gonna watch this you know that's the thing about these recordings you, never you know? know you never know some people this is what they do um no, no i think this actually was a productive uh way to address this um you know, maybe it's something we should think about doing going forward, even if we're doing regular town meetings, just as a way to alleviating some questions at the town. Yeah. Um, I, I was really curious if anyone had any actual questions about the Warren articles or if they really just want to know about the conditions of the meeting, you know, because it's kind of a, you know, the the warrant's not really that, you know, flashy this year. It, so. Right, it's pretty standard, but the questions were about, you know, things on the warrant more than the uh, conditions out there, you know. Right. Unfortunately, I think for some people, if they're really concerned that this isn't going to be a safe environment, they're not going to come, and there's not much we can do about that. Right. Um, and if they do come, you know, we're going to do the best we can to keep everybody safe. The good thing, I think, in Menden is that it's only going to be residents there, or should only be residents there. I know the number of testing positive cases in Menden hasn't changed in about three weeks. So I think we're in good shape as far as that goes. Um, right. So the combination of all of that, I think, puts us in a good position. I know Upton did their town meeting Tuesday, and I think they went till about 10 o'clock. Oh, uh, let's, let's, let's not do that. Let's no, not do that. It'll be dark, so we won't know yeah. what we're doing if it's dark. Um, you know, Officer uh, Chief Kessler offered to bring the police or the fire department's tower, light tower, and I'm thinking that's a bad idea because that's an incentive to stay um let, let's get the meeting done but i think this is a warrant we should be able to go through without a whole lot of issues you know um i think there'll be some questions on the override for the schools i think there'll be a couple of questions about the bylaws that typically happen but for the I most mean, part are you considering possibly saying at the beginning of the meeting you know uh, limiting each person's time to no more than three minutes um, i mean some, just in I case have, I actually tell people 30 seconds. I always have. Well, but I'm just saying just so ever it's fair is fair, you know, yeah. it's only to speak once on a topic and no more than X, whatever number. Um, I, I, my comments that I put together are similar to that, but it's mostly that, you know, first of all, don't get up and tell us you support it. Don't support it. Stick specifically to asking questions. Um, you know, no filibustering, no uh, extension. So it's a, it's a fine line. So I don't like have a time clock that I set. You know, like I'm not a lawyer. I don't turn the hourglass over the minute the phone rings before I talk to you. Um, we could try that. Yeah. Um, well, it might work. It might work. I mean. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to strongly suggest that everybody be brief that, you know, I, I really I really true believe, you know, what I said about, you know, if you come with five, six pages, pretty much after about a minute, you've lost your crowd. You've lost right. people. And they're looking at their phones. They're looking around. We're going to be outside now. There's going to be birds. You know, I think you lose people very quickly. So then you're just talking to yourself or talking because you can. But, right. you know, I try to make sure that people have an opportunity to speak to everything. Because I do think it's important that everybody has a chance to say what they want to say. That's the purpose of open town meeting. Right. 
So yes, it is. All right, we got a minute left. I think <laughs> we've covered it. I think everybody has pretty much left the room. Elvis, I see a says show conversation. It was something else. Oh, I don't know. It gives me a dot. So this is different than Zoom. I actually like Zoom better. I think it gives you a better representation of what's going on. Um, I've done some. Get used to it. Get used to it. You'll get used to it. We're going to have this now for the foreseeable future. Right. It's how we're going to conduct all of our meetings. Easier. You know, if you have a Menden email address, you'll be able to just click right, right. in. So, right. Um, and that'll really help because then everyone, you can record from there. That You know, it'll make life so much more transparent. Yeah. I mean. Somebody had asked me if we were going to use this Monday night, and I suppose theoretically you could set it up as a session just, but I don't think you would get everything, so I'm not sure it would be practical. You know, well, you, could, you could, if we were doing it, we could have like a remote feed so people could watch at home, but they couldn't participate. Correct. You know, that's the only, you know, so. But the best way to do that is to have somebody with a camera like the cable company come like they used to right. and they film it and broadcast it live. I'm not sure that we have the capability to do that. I think we've hit our seven o'clock. I appreciate you all for joining us. And, all right. Uh, see you Monday night. Thanks. See you Monday. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. bye.